Welcome to A Friend of Mine, a series of conversations with some incredible and inspiring women in business from regional and rural Australia. I'm Kimberly Finesse, your host and the founder and editor of Oak Magazine, and I cannot wait to introduce you to some amazing female entrepreneurs who will share with you their experience and knowledge of what it takes to start, grow and scale a successful business. So let me introduce you to a friend of mine. Dani LaCastro is no stranger to redundancy. In her 10 years with one of Australia's biggest four banks, Dani was made redundant six times. In November 2019, Dani chose to take her redundancy package and walk away from the finance sector. With a burning desire to ignite the passion and potential within people, Dani stepped into the role of sole purpose coach and launched her own business, The Healing Collective. Dani shares with us her journey from corporate to business ownership the personal impact of redundancy and the importance of mindset, and why she has invested in self-development so early on in her business. Meet my friend Danny from The Healing Collective. Hello, Danny, and welcome to a friend of mine. Hi, Kimberly. How are you? I'm so, so good uh, because we've recently connected through Lisa Messenger's mentoring group, which, can I say, has been a fabulous way to spend a Thursday night. Um, and in the very first session where, you know, we introduce ourselves, I was just totally taken by the energy and the passion that you spoke with, you know, and then we had another session about collaboration and here we are. Yes, it's been it's been a fantastic journey and we've met some lovely, lovely women along the way, haven't we? Oh, we have. Um, and from all parts of Australia. Yeah, it's been pretty fabulous. Just to have that kind of time where you know you can regroup with like-minded people is, is something special. Mm. And to realise that, you know, we're from all different industries, but to be honest, we face the same issues and the same problems and, you know, the same concerns and, and worries and doubts and... Yeah, we're all very, very similar. I was just about to say, it's like uh, disregard our industry and under the surface is very, very similar kind of problems and issues that come up for us. And I just love that we are, you know, a group of women that can share that and be vulnerable um, because I think that's, that's how we step forward into our power once we can kind of put it out there. Yeah, definitely. Um, it just, it really serves no purpose to hold it in, does it? No. Like to just, to not speak out those fears and failures. We're all feeling them and I think that part that I guess is really, really um, working for me is that the people that do it anyway do it, or doing the stuff that you want to do are feeling it anyway as well. So we might as well talk about it instead of pretending that it doesn't exist. You know, and then someone can, you know, either see it, read it, hear it, watch it and think, wow, you know, that person is feeling exactly the same way I am you know, I'm not out of my depth. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm okay. I'm the same as everyone else. You know, let's get back on the horse and let me give this a crack. I totally resonate. It's like, I think we were talking about it a little bit before as well when, um, you know, we used to idolize leaders who would put on a pedestal and think, oh my God, they're amazing. Uh, and, um, and kind of look up. And I think the way we're heading or, or what kind of resonates now is that the real human behind the people that put themselves forward. Um, it's not necessarily that kind of, um, status or or um, or ego that we look up to anymore. It's more moving into a place of uh, of I don't know equality in leadership, and I really really like that how it's heading. Mm. And I mean, really, Lisa Messenger is there a more authentic oh. person that lives their life out loud than than her? She's so, so real, and it's so needed in a world that I you know, know hides behind pictures or hides behind images. Let's just be the real humans we are, so people can actually show up and be themselves. It is. Now we could probably talk about this for quite a while, but hey, we're here to talk about you. Um, now you've very, very recently gone from corporate to business ownership. Uh, can you take me through that journey? For sure. So I worked for NAB for about a decade or just under, and uh, I've spent the first three years in personal and business banking. That's when I realized I have such a passion for people over numbers. So I thought that I was going to be an accountant when I grew up or working in a bank and working in finance. But as I started to work with the humans behind the number, I realized this is exactly where I want to be. My face, my heart, my, I don't know, everything lit up when I saw a person achieve what they wanted to achieve. I know what it feels like. Um, and I just wanted to pay that forward to people. 
So that's when I moved into learning and development. So I spent the last six years of my career um, in various roles in HR, but I guess the one that I absolutely loved was um, leadership development and organisational coaching, which took me all around Australia. Um, I was lucky enough to actually spend time in um, many of our regional branches as well as our metro branches, and I just fell in love with the different types of humans that you come in contact with. And that's when I realised no matter what we look like, no matter what we sound like, we all face very similar issues. It's just sometimes the judgment and the fear that holds us back to, from connecting with people. And I just wanted to be that face that, that kind of was a bit disruptive and a bit the opposite. But over that time that I was at the bank, I was made redundant six times. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Six times. Oh yeah. My gosh. So I think it was about an eight and a half year career and just about every 12 to 18 months, it was a fear of losing your job. Um, and interesting, interestingly, Kimberly, I thought that I was working at an ASX listed company for job security. So it's just weird how things kind of the stories you tell yourself about where you are. And so in terms of redundancy, like how do you view redundancy? Do you take it personally or, you know, I mean, it's happened six times. I mean, like how do you not sort of start to see that as a sign of, mm, am I supposed to be here? You know what? When I first got made redundant the first time, I was it was like my whole world got ripped apart because I thought, what am I going to do? This is what I studied for. This is where I'm meant to be. I have a mortgage. I don't know how I'm going to pay that. And, and now I'm going to lose the job that, well, what am I meant to do? And that's the story I told myself. Um, I definitely took it personally uh, most of the times, I think. But it was it's kind of hard when at a – and I think people listening that have ever worked in corporate might be able to resonate with this, that when you're working at a job and you're, meant, you're told to take it personally because you've got performance reviews every year and you've got meetings you need to show up for and you've got to put yourself in a role that is basically your life for eight hours of that day. And then the business decides that your role is no longer needed and that's when they tell you don't take it personally. But for every other day, I was meant to take it personally. So that's what I found really hard, um, that you can kind of have a position and it's not that it's yours and I I didn't necessarily think it was my position to own forever, but I just found it interesting, the story of don't take it personally because it's it's just a business decision. Um, and I think that's the part, now I'm a little bit woo-woo, so on 11-11, <laughs> on 11-11, my, my redundancy for the last time happened and that's when I thought, I'm not meant to be here anymore. The culture um, is just not for me. I, I have, And I don't want to talk down on the place. I had such a great experience there. I had such a great career. But as I started to move more into my 30s, I decided it's not really lighting me up. Like I can do the job. But I don't go home feeling, yes, I've helped someone or yes, I've really, really made a difference. And I know for me, when I was in learning and development and you kind of appreciate the space of growing and personal development, I realise that that's where I want to be. Yeah. Wow. I just, um, as I said, I'm still stuck on the six redundancy <laughs> and how you get back up and how you stay with that one company um, through that. Um, yeah, you've done so well because redundancies are hard. Like it takes people a lot to get back from it. And, um, you know, sometimes it's like a little, I suppose, almost a chip at your confidence every time, like someone just chiseling away at it. Obviously that last redundancy happened at the end of 2019 before the bushfires and then COVID. Mm -hmm. I mean, not great timing, is it? (laughs) But, um, you know, what, what made you decide to say, hey, I think I'm going to give this whole business ownership a shot rather than going back into a corporate nine to five? Well, interestingly, um, I didn't do it straight away. So I um, I was getting married in March. So I got made redundant for the last time in November last year and I was planning my wedding um, and our honeymoon. And I just thought um, uh, I want a job to kind of you know, um, move into the space that I've always wanted to be, which is people oriented and people experience and really helping ignite the passion and the potential inside of people. And um, so I got, I was lucky enough to get a job at a consulting agency. I met someone through my work at NAB and um, they, a beautiful company offered me a role and I met some lovely people. Um, but interestingly, when I got back from my honeymoon, my new boss said, um, can we have a chat? And I'd 
it was mid COVID and um, I kind of knew what was coming. Um, and yeah, he called me and basically said, we can't, um, we can't keep you on any longer. Um, I'm sorry. Um, and yeah, the day that I was meant to start or go back to that company um, is the day that I weirdly just rebranded my Instagram page, uh, the healing collective. And I don't know what happened. It just kind of came out of me that this is where I'm kind of meant to be. And I just started working towards what I actually wanted to do instead of working towards something I told myself I had to do. So that's when my mindset flipped to you have the space and time now to really, really do what you want to do. Do you want to go back into corporate and just earn money straight away, secure, or do you want to take a risk and have a go? I used to coach people um, to do this themselves and I had the opportunity to try and I thought I'm going to step up and I'm going to step into the space where I have no idea. Um, But that's why I kind of want to help people and lead the way because I'm willing to take the step forward and willing to kind of make myself feel uncomfortable and vulnerable because I know what it's like one with growth. I've been in adult learning for a long time and I know that discomfort causes growth and, and it, getting yourself out of that comfort zone is really, really where the growth happens. Uh, So what steps have then you taken to launch your own business? Like how did you figure out how to start your own business? That's funny, Kimberly, because I wish there was um, a linear way to be able to say, this is how I've launched my business. And if there is any other business owners out there, can you please let me know? Um, But what I want to say, and um, and I guess um, help people out there, if there's anyone listening that might need to hear this is, messy action, putting one foot in front of the other and just being okay with reframing failure. So instead of um, instead of thinking of failure as, oh, I didn't get to where I wanted to get and I've completely failed myself, I, I reframe it as it's a learning opportunity and it's a one step closer to actually nailing what I want to do because a three failures is is better than none in my opinion. And the reason I say that is because I used to um, facilitate one of these concepts called fixed and growth mindset in our leadership workshops. Um, And a fixed mindset is a very black and white thinker. It's either failure or winning. Um, And there's a lot lot more to it. But the lady by the name of Carol Dweck was the one that came up with the philosophy. Um, And the growth mindset is more of a, um, I guess, an open mindset where you understand that, um, you know, uh, there's grey, it's ambiguous um, and it's not always linear and sometimes you need to be really uncomfortable to grow. So um, I guess long story short is I've just been able to um, open my mind and learn from other people who are doing it and be willing to ask questions, um, be willing to jump into the, that learner seat because I think the more that you put yourself out there and be vulnerable and don't feel like you have to know all the answers is the moment that you open yourself up to such immense growth. Yeah, 100%. And also about asking questions. As you said, there really is no handbook. And I mean, I I know that we'd think that someone would have written it by now, but the thing with launching your own business is that it's not a template. It looks different for all of us. It looks different each time. So I've launched two businesses now and um, yeah, they were very different. One's really service-based, so business to business, where the other one's product. Um, And yeah, there's just, you've got to ask those questions and you almost have to get over that that fear of, is it a dumb question? Mm. And, and don't even phrase it like that. So don't even start like, look, I know this is a really silly question. It's really basic. Do you know what? It, it's probably not. Mm. And, you know, if if you don't have any sort of, I suppose, business experience, previous business experience, or, you know, maybe your family aren't in business, which is me. I had no one around me. Um, yeah, you just don't know. And also very important to ask the right people that I think are within your industry or mm. know your niche. I totally agree with that. And um, I, Re- Brene Brown actually talks about something very similar about making sure that the person you're seeking advice from and the person you're seeking criticism from is in the arena doing what you're doing, you know, showing up. Yeah, exactly. Don't ask the people sitting on the sidelines watching. That's They're exactly not the ones it. to ask. <laughs> Um, Now, you're so very, very early on in your business, but you've invested in something like Lisa's mentoring course. 
you know, like, did you ever, like, why did you do that? And did you ever feel at any point that maybe it was too soon for you to invest in yourself and in your business? I think I've always, um, I've loved, I've always loved learning. So in, um, I guess when I used to run the learning and development area, or I used to manage one of the teams there, I, um, I would always believe in investing in yourself. So I guess, um, you know, whether it was a uni degree or then I went and studied some, um, you know, stuff in leadership or then further on to my organisational coaching um, stuff, I've always believed that the more that you open yourself to growth, the more you fill yourself up, the more you've got to serve others. And I've always wanted to be able to serve others in a way that um, basically helped people go home feeling less suffering. I, 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 my wish to the, to pay it forward is in whatever it is that you're doing or whatever it is that you're feeling, I just hope that um, we can create, you know, people who do what they want to do and, and feel what they want to feel and, and be able to step into their authentic self. Um, and I guess the reason I believe in it so much is because I, I can see to our minds, to our, you know, to our brains what growth does. Um, and I, I say that because... I did study a lot in terms of adult learning and um, we need growth. We need conversations that kind of keep us alive. And I think if I didn't put myself out there um, and, and sign up to something that I didn't know whether it was, you know, going to be right for me or not, um, I wouldn't have met the people. I wouldn't have met you, Kimberly. I wouldn't have met the lovely ladies that I've um, met in the group. And I think, and I was saying this to myself, actually, sometimes we tell ourselves, oh, I'm not going to study that because it's not going to do this for me. And we tell ourselves what the experience is going to be before we experience it. One of the things I really, really want to put out there is don't, don't get into the trap of doing that because there are so many little things along the way that you pick up that you wouldn't have even been able to tell yourself is going to happen. So instead of prioritizing, um, and it's important, obviously, money is really important, but instead of prioritizing, um, this is how much I'm going to lose from it, I started to reframe my thinking to what could I potentially gain? So I started to look through the lens of um, learning and moving forward instead of the lens of how much is this going to cost me. Mm, yeah. And so from the, the mentoring course, like since you've started that, you've actually landed your first client. I can't believe it. I know. I'm so excited. I still, you know, wake up some days and think, do I really get to do the stuff that I've always told myself I want to do one day? It, it feels surreal um, at the same time. I don't want to um, sugarcoat it. There is days where it's really, really hard. And I'm sure you can agree. You know, I've been protected by the corporate world for 10 years. I was basically wearing the NAB badge. I was basically protected by a big ASX listed company. And I felt like I, I could, you know, be who I needed to be because I had that backing. Now on my own, I've got my own message. I've got my own face up there. And all the moments of, you know, self-questioning and self-worth really raised to the surface. Um, and I think that that's something that um, I'm working on so I can help, you know, pay it forward and help people in the future who really, really need that help to be able to do what they do. So when I got my first client, I cried, but cried of happiness. I don't know if ever, anyone's ever held that feeling of, is this real? Do I, am I actually getting to do what I love? Um, oh, we do a dance. We, we do. We do a dance. We pinch ourselves. Um, we double check bank accounts and make sure that it's actually there and they're not going to take it away. And, yes, that's exactly oh, right. It's a massive celebration. Absolutely. Um, so that was very exciting. And um, yeah, I just think that uh, if anyone, uh, you know, if anyone needs to hear it, what you want out there is it exists. Don't, um, don't settle for the story that you've told yourself for many years. I did. Um, and I think it's really important to get the experience um, in whatever it is that you're doing. But then I think always stay true to that niggle, that niggling feeling that there's got to be something more because I can't believe a year ago today I would not be, think that I would be running my own business and have my own clients. Saying that out loud just sounds so for real. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I think business ownership has a way of picking us. Um, yeah, sometimes it just happens very organically. It's not something we plan. It's um, sometimes something we fall into. Uh, but yeah, I think it's an amazing roller coaster ride that you are now on. Oh, absolutely. So strap in. 
highs and lows. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. So just take me through because I haven't had a coach before, a business coach. Uh, how do you work, Danny? Like, you know, if I come to you, like what are we working on? What questions are you asking me? Uh, yeah, can you give me some like insight into that? Absolutely. So um, a coach, I used to always um, position my uh, myself when I – kind of rolled out coaching. So I used to run sessions with leaders as well as coach people. And when I would roll the session out, I'd just make it clear that coaching isn't training. It's not mentoring. It's not counseling. um, It's not consulting. It's not managing. It's a combination of consulting and therapy. And the reason I say that is because what we do is we provide an environment where you have both support and challenge to do the things that you've always wanted to do. The way the session works is I'll ask you questions that you may not have asked yourself and hearing them out loud is something different to the story you tell yourself in your mind about them. So I remember when I was first coaching someone and I realised what value this skill had and I had never seen it before. I'd never understood what a coach was. I'd always heard about sports coaches and um, and I guess I, I used to play basketball when I was younger and had a basketball coach. But those types of coaches are telling you what to do, giving you advice. I don't claim to know your situation better than you do. But what I do know is that you've got potential inside of you, but there's something interfering. And my role is to help you understand what's interfering with your potential so you can go and do the things you've always wanted to do. So I ask you questions, I challenge you, and I support you to grow into that space. Mm. There you go. Mm. I um, have a feeling I need a business coach at some stage. Oh, we'll definitely <laughs> I've have a got chat. Lots of, yeah, yeah, I've got lots of blockages happening some days. <laughs> no, we um, all do. We all do, right? Yeah. But being able to bring them to the service is, um, is something that I guess it's vulnerable, but that, like we talked about before, that's where the growth happens. And if you want to level up um, and, and get to the next kind of problem to solve, a coach or a mentor will help you get there. Yeah, it sounds great. So you have an Instagram account, like many of us do for a business. Uh, however, you've got 11K on your account. Now, I'm going to assume that, you know, you didn't start this in November when you were made redundant. So how did that happen? How, when did you start your account? Why did you start it? And how have you grown that audience? Yeah, so you're right. I definitely didn't start it in November last year. <laughs> I... um. I spent probably about two years in a role where I was, um, a lot of my time was around in different pockets of Australia. So I had a lot of time um, to do something. I guess I used to love reading and I used to love um, learning. And um, I just thought, I think maybe even back then, I just thought there was, there's got to be something more. And I think what I didn't like about Instagram was the fakeness, Um, you know, the just idolizing these fake people, I'm going to say it, um, these people who are influencers who are pushing products (laughs) that they don't even believe in. And I just felt so strongly that what if we use this platform for impact? What if we use this platform to help people instead of showing people how good you are? I just, I don't know, I just had this thing that I thought, what if we could do something different? And so I'm sure there was people out there already doing it. But I used to get called the mindset girl when I used to go and facilitate because my mindset session probably needed to go for half an hour in the workbook, but I pushed it out. I saw the value in it. I saw that the reason why people don't do the things they want to do isn't because they don't know what to do. It's because of how they talk to themselves. And once I figured that out about myself, I realized that our thoughts are just chemistry. It's brain chemistry. And what we want, we've got to start talking to ourselves in a way that allows ourselves to show up. And once I kind of figured that out and people started telling me that that's what they knew me as, I thought, well, why don't I start something where I can combine, um, you know, the reality of the world where a lot of people are sitting at at the moment on Instagram, as well as my passion for coaching and, and healing and helping people move forward. So I kind of started just posting different thoughts or different um, ideas on this page. And it's definitely transformed over time. If anyone goes back a long time, you'll see that, it's definitely had a different um, themes along the way, but I think I finally got to the place where I want to combine um, that healing, but also coaching. So I care about you and I want to support you, but I also want to challenge you to think differently because I know that's what it takes to be able to take the next step or, or do the thing that you've always wanted to do. 
Mm, yeah. And are you looking forward to leveraging that community of 11K now that you have your own business? Absolutely. So I'm starting, I'm trying to, um, oh, it's, a, it's an interesting world, Instagram, isn't it? The, um, the algorithm and how it all works. But um, I'm actually really excited because I'm doing one of your courses, Kimberly, and I, I can't wait because I think the part that um, is a, definitely a new spot for me is marketing and, and advertising and and really putting yourself out there in a way that's digestible for people. So mm. I'm really looking forward to that um, Ignite Your Instagram course. Oh, brilliant. You will love Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, lots of little videos step by step um, just to help you through and a workbook to work through. But I really think that your challenge uh, is going to be ensure that you put yourself on the grid. Mm. So you've got lots of quote posts, which are fantastic. But now that you are a business owner, you're going to need to show your face. Okay? Because, you know, people buy, you know, from people they know. So we like to see who we're buying from. We like to connect with them. And we've been able to do that with you through words. So I think um, it'll be fantastic to see you on your grid. And I know that that can be a challenge. <laughs> um, but, yeah, go and book in a photo shoot. Get get a Pinterest board happening. Um, yeah, pop some ideas on there on what you want it to look like and go and treat yourself to a photo shoot. And, That's you know, you'll have idea. so much content and it'll just make life easier. And I think it will just be beautiful to sprinkle those in between your quote posts. So, you know, you've sort of got that personal aspect, but then can show your expertise in coaching. You're so right. I um, And I think that's the part that Lisa's um, mentoring group has really helped me because I was so scared to show my face. I actually didn't think that I would. Um, and I, th- uh, you know, as I'll, I'll slowly start to put it on the account, but what I've started to do to transition is to do little stories about, I don't know, what I'm dealing with that day or I guess what I'd love people to start to think about. Um, and the next stage is to put something permanently up there, <laughs> I think. <laughs> But you know what, being with, yeah. speaking to like-minded people and just, um, and being in a group where, um, you know, I can connect with you, I can connect with lo- other lovely females who are going through the same thing. Um, it, it's that, that scary thought of this is me and I'm going to get rejected if I put myself out there. And I think that what I've learned is rejection is just redirection. So if someone doesn't, um, if people don't really warm to what you've put out there, then maybe they're not your client or maybe that you could learn some things along the way to help lift your presence to be able to get closer to that client. So instead of talking to myself about how, you know, poorly I thought that that post was, I've stopped doing that and I've started to talk to myself in a different way. And I think that's half the battle. Oh, it is. That's a really hard mindset to change, you know, because we're always looking at those numbers. Like, you know, why didn't everyone love it? Why is no one sharing it? Why is no one commenting on it? Um, yeah, it's. I think we were talking about this um, just before we hit the record button in that, um, like I was just saying, for me, Instagram's a bit of a, a workout at the moment. Oh. Like it's actually taking a lot of energy to get on. Absolutely. And I really do think it's to do with COVID. Having been, you know, isolated and not getting out, not connecting with people face-to-face where you have those those deeper connections and those real conversations. Um, Yeah, I've probably just been scrolling and I don't even know what I'm looking for. Mm. I I don't know what I'm waiting to jump out at me. All I know is that I haven't got my blinkers on and that comparison um, syndrome has really come in, which then I reckon has a flow on effect to my confidence. Um, Yeah, and trying to separate myself from the business as well. So myself from Oak, you know, we're not both the same thing and, you know, I should stop trying to compare my success to what the magazine's doing. Does mm. that make sense? Yeah, totally, totally. Um, I think sometimes it can be a bit of a hole and um, and that's why what I've done, because um, uh, I think that it is definitely a business tool, um, but what I've had to do in, in my kind of world is give myself times. So I would sometimes, you know, think for hours on, what am I going to, what am I going to post? What content am I going to put out there? How am I going to be effective today? I want to be able to serve people. And I was coming from a place of scarcity. Your, your clients can feel that people can feel that. So instead of coming from that place, um, I make sure I look after myself, fill my cup up and then allow my schedule myself time for Instagram instead of feeling like it's kind of an energy cord that's always there. If that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, that's a good way. It is an energy cord. I need to switch it off and pull it out of oh, the socket at the minute. It's it's easier said than done though, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it is because, 
you know, your business is so wrapped up in it, absolutely. unfortunately. Like, um, yeah, it's just sometimes absolutely crazy. I also think it's it's like an addiction. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, I just sometimes wish, why can't I put my phone down? Mm-hmm. Like, what's wrong with me? Yeah. <laughs> I need intervention. I definitely do. <laughs> I think what we all do. I used to be so good at it. So good at, um, you know, managing other people's social media mm. and getting on and knowing, right, I'm on for business. This is a job. Mm-hmm. Da, da, da. Tick the boxes and then off and then maybe get on at night just for a little bit of like personal um, pleasure as such. Uh, yeah, but oh my gosh, I just found I've totally lost my way and I'm blaming isolation. I'm blaming the fact <laughs> of being locked up with four kids for how many weeks? Nine weeks. Fair it's enough. Just made- <laughs> Oh, I need a holiday. Um, <laughs> well, you're doing amazingly. Four kids oh, thanks, in isolation, Danny. running your own business. Seriously. Oh man. Yeah. Running two businesses. I'm about to let one go. Oh, um, wow. And again, this has just come from our mentoring session with Lisa. Uh, you know, we've got this um, upcoming session just about looking at, you know, our day-to-day list and and what's not serving us, what we hate doing, what's taking time. And um, for me, it's not, uh, you know, a task. It's an, it's an actual <laughs> It's an actual business that's not serving me anymore. The whole business. Um, the whole business. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's not something as easily fixed as getting a VA or, you know, something <laughs> like that or a bookkeeper. It's like, you know what? It's become a job. Um, mm-hmm. I am so invested in Oak. I love it. I want to work on it every day. Hence why I did the podcast. I yeah. just, you know, I just want to... I, couldn't write stories at the moment um I thought oh well how can I share people's stories how can I help people um feel less isolated you know help them feel less alone on the journey and that there's other people out there that are feeling exactly the same way so yeah very invested in oak um now to wrap us up because I've talked way too long today. I'm so sorry. I don't normally. No, when the two facilitators get together, all they do is want to talk. I, yeah, talk. that's what it is. I can actually imagine what we'd be like um, doing a workshop together. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so to wrap us up, can you tell me about a friend of yours that we need to know about? Yeah, I would actually love to share um, my mentor. So I met her at uh, NAB, actually, uh, Simone McDonald. She is... Um, she was one of the um, the GMs at um, when I was in leadership development, and I've actually asked her to be my business mentor because she's transitioning from the big corporate world to working at an, uh, a smaller um, agency or more of a creative space. And um, and I just think um, she's just got a, a world of knowledge that um, that you know if I ever struggle with what I'm going through or what I'm thinking about, I know I can pick up the phone and I know there's a space where I can just be myself. And I think there needs to be more leaders out there like that. Um, And she was just different for me because she allowed me to be the empath or the kind of sensitive person that I am to grow into um, that as a strength rather than, you know, the whole world telling us that it's a a weakness. Um, And I just think that she's been able to, um, yeah, really help me with um, moving forward. And I just wanted to, yeah, put her out there. Simone McDonald. Mm. So in terms of uh, the mentor relationship that you have, Mm. how did that come about for you? You know, did you approach her to be your mentor? Like how often do you catch up? Yeah, good point. So um, actually Lisa, so credit to Lisa again. Um, She's done some amazing things. So like I said, I would never have thought that, I've never have told myself that this is what I would have gained from it. So Lisa gave us a little task one week to go and to connect with some people um, on LinkedIn. And I just thought my business wasn't in a place where I needed um, uh, an advisor or, you know, some of the the people that she was asking us to connect with. And I just thought, well, how can I reposition this? Because I'm not going to go at it alone and I might not be at that stage yet, but what could I use? And I knew that um, I, I really value a mentor relationship I also value reverse mentoring because I have the belief that you can learn um, just the same amount of someone who is more experienced than you versus someone who's younger and maybe more junior because of the ways that people think, right? Mm, So I always will invest in reverse mentoring or mentoring. So Simone McDonald is my mentor um, and we catch up probably once a fortnight um, and I just make sure that, um, you know, if anything comes up that week or that fortnight that I have questions on and would love to... um, She's got great experience um, and has some, seen some very different industries. So just to, you know, um, have a conversation and, and speak out loud, I think sometimes we just need to create the space. 
the conversations mm-hmm. that we have in our head, <laughs> you know, sometimes we just get the same things back because we, oh, we speak exactly. on a loop. <laughs> And maybe that's what COVID has done for us as well. I don't know if any other business owners are feeling like this, but this whole isolation thing, and don't get me wrong, I've done so many Zoom sessions over the last nine weeks, um, be it, you know, workshops um, or just one-on-ones, things like that. But I just think there's nothing like meeting face-to-face and connecting with humans. I like being home. Don't get me wrong. I definitely love my home, but there's something about energy that humans bring to a space. And I think when you're in the, you know, when you're learning and you're growing and the energy that you can feel off other people, I really feel that. I really connect to that. And I'm sure there's other people out there that definitely, um, and you're obviously one of them, but definitely can feel other people's energy. Um, And it's, well, most of the time it's super helpful. Sometimes when you're in that workshop and you've got that person who you can really feel doesn't want to be there, (laughs) that isn't great. But nothing replaces face to face. It doesn't. So maybe that's um, a task that we can set um, everyone that's listening is to reach out to someone, Mm. you know, and whether that be on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a fantastic platform. I cannot wait to get someone on the podcast to talk us through that. Um, But reach out to a network and and find someone that, um, yeah, you can connect with on a regular basis, be it a mentor, that you can share, you know, your highs and lows and hurdles and, and maybe find some direction and yeah, just have those conversations that I think are really important so that you don't feel alone on this roller coaster because, um, yeah, you just don't want to get stuck on the lows all the time. You want to make sure you can roll through them and keep going up to, to where it feels good. Absolutely. And I think whatever you need to do to change your state, um, we all feel those feelings, those lows, those kind of groundhog day and uh, oh, is it ever, yeah. ever going to get better? And it, it does if, um, if you're sometimes it's really hard to get yourself out of it and it might take days or it might take hours, whatever it is for you. Um, but changing your state, whatever that, whatever you know that's going to help you get through it. Um, and if you don't, talk to someone, write, write it down. If you're you know, more of an introvert, journaling is something fantastic. If you're more of an extrovert, have a conversation and you know, get it out there. Um, yeah. Changing your state is something that I've found that's really helpful for me because we have a choice and sometimes it's harder you know, when we're feeling low, but I ultimately feel that there is a choice. So if anyone out there needs a spot of inspiration or a really good feeling quote that can change your mindset, make sure you check out Danny's Instagram account, which is called The Healing Collective. And uh, Danny, I will see you tomorrow night in our Zoom session. I will see you <laughs> then. Lisa. We're coming to the end. Um, but I feel that, yeah, it's a friendship now that will go past that group, which is fabulous. And yeah, all the best for starting your own business well done you you are part of a um a really growing community of female entrepreneurs now in Mm. uh yeah in Australia which is also exciting and yeah just can't wait till you start um yeah growing your business getting clients and and helping us change our mindset well thank you I've 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 had so much fun um chatting with you today and I really really value um you reaching out and, and saying you know, when we first connected that thing about my energy, because that really gives you, um, you know, if other people are feeling it and you don't feel it yourself, sometimes it gives you the reason to move forward. Um, So if anyone out there is listening and um, and is struggling with something, um, I think stay connected to people. Kimberly, you've really helped me transition through uh, moving from the corporate space into running my own business and seeing people like you go out there and kill it every day um, just gives me inspiration. So thank you for providing me the space. Thank you. What a lovely thing to say. Um, On that note, I've decided I need to write down and document kind words, you know, wins, achievements, all those things so that on those days where it just doesn't seem like you're doing anything right, that you can look at that little board and go, hey, remember when someone said that about you? So I'm going to go and work on that today. Good idea. (laughs) I really love that. Ah, full of good ideas. It's Wednesday. What's happening? (laughs) Anyway, thank you so, so much. And um, yeah, it's been a absolute pleasure to have you as a guest on our podcast. Thank you so much, Kimberly. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. You're welcome. Now, before you take off with all that inspiration and knowledge, we'd love for you to leave a review on our podcast so that we can continue to amplify women's voices in the media. And if you have any questions, we'd like to celebrate a win can always connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Oak Magazine AU. I'm so glad we've met and that now you know a friend of mine.